One of the most respected people that I've ever met in my life is Henry Gruber, but probably number two is a guy that used to work for Prophecy Club. David was probably the most humble man I've ever met. Nothing special about him. He never won any great awards. He never did a radio or a TV program. He didn't know the Bible especially well. Worked for Prophecy Club for over 10 years. One day he was playing basketball, and they said he just sat down and said, I'm really tired, and fell over dead. Had a massive hemorrhage in his artery, and his heart was pumping blood into his body. They found out later when they did the autopsy. Here's the thing. There were so many people showing up to David's funeral that they had to move it to the local gymnasium. There was not a church in town big enough to hold all the people. Nothing special. Didn't have millions of dollars to his name. But everybody liked it. He said this to me one day. He said, you know, Stan, he said, I try to always wait at least two days thinking about something where someone does something that, that irritates or annoys me. I always wait at least two days before I say anything to him about it. I always wait two days. You're not hearing me. <laughs> I always wait two days before I say anything to him about it. And guess what? Most of the time I don't say anything to him. Mm. If you think about it, if you look back at the things, the people in your life you love the most, you respect the most, are the ones generally that don't get angry. Think about it. They don't get angry. Just very seldom. If they do get angry, and by the way, we do all get angry, but they control it. They just don't let you see it. If you kick a stone in anger, you'll hurt your own foot. Yes? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> Resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Now, you got that? Resentment is like taking the poison and expecting them to die. <laughs> That's kind of what anger is, isn't it? We get mad, we want them to die. But when we get mad, we're the one that's dying, okay? Not the fastest horse can catch a word spoken in anger. There's a saying I heard when I was a child that said, the pen, once written, cannot return. In other words, once you've written or once you've spoken it, it's gone. No man can think clearly when his fists are clenched. Anger is short-lived madness. Have you ever been so mad that you, you were just going to really tell them a thing or two or really say or do something and probably you knew you were going to do it, but we still went ahead and did it? Well, I have. Before you give someone a piece of your mind, make sure you can get by with what's left. <laughs> now, here's some quotes I disagree with. Get mad, then get over it, Colin Powell. I don't think we should get mad. Uh, we sure need to, to fight against getting angry. As I look back over my life, and I think you'll agree with this, some of the greatest heartaches, some of the biggest mistakes I made were because I got mad. So, I don't agree. Get mad, then go to go, get over it. Well, the only part that I would say is probably right is get over it. But it's a whole lot better if you don't get there in the first place, yes? The world needs anger. The world often continues to allow evil because it isn't angry enough. Okay, here's the part I disagree with. The world needs anger. I don't agree with that. I do think that there is a place for righteous anger, and we'll talk about that. Never go to bed mad, stay up and fight. Phyllis Diller. I don't agree with that, okay? The Bible says don't go to bed. It's a bad man. In certain trying circumstances, urgent circumstances, desperate circumstances, profanity furnishes a relief denied even to prayer. I don't agree with that. 
I was talking to one of our best supporters on the phone two or three weeks ago. I can't remember what it was. But I said, well, you know, that guy, and the guy says to me, he says, go ahead and say it, Stan. We're friends. <laughs> I said, no. If I say it here, I'll say it there. Okay? Leslie and I try to live our lives not trying to please you or not trying to think, oh, as a congregation member watching. We try to live our lives knowing that Jesus is watching. Yes? yes? So, I've discovered in my life, I don't have to please other people if I please Jesus. My objective is to please Jesus, yes? Mm -hmm. Anger dwells only in the bosom of fools. No, I don't agree with that. I think anger dwells in every person who has a beating heart. This has a Some twin. control it. This has a twin. Some don't. The twin. You agree? Okay. Even Jesus got angry. <gasps> He did, I'll show you. That's right. And to the Pharisees, I'll show you. Here's what the Bible says about anger. Anybody, by the way, want to guess what it says? Anybody want to guess? Is anger good or not? Anybody want to guess? Uh, yeah, um, anger is bad and it's wrath and it's wholly perfect and true in its indignation. It has no bitterness within it whatsoever. Here's what it says. Do, what? Yeah, well, we'll talk about the kinds of anger. Be, be angry as sin not. Enter not into the path of... I'm going to put angry there because that's what it's talking about. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. And, of course, anger is, in some cases, a sin. We'll talk about that. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For the sleep, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken. The sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat of the bread of wickedness and drink of the wine of violence. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce in their wrath. For it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Essentially, the Bible is saying, "Don't get angry." Proverbs: The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and look at this: his glory is to pass over transgression. Somebody offends us. Arr! The Bible says it's our glory to pass over when someone does something. Can somebody pull out in front of you in traffic? I always try to say, you know, I've done that. When somebody does something to offend me, I say, I've done that. And it helps me deal with it. Because just whatever they've done, I have done it. At one time or another, right? Yeah. In my life, yeah. I'll say, you know, I've done that. Or I'll say, I understand I've done that. Somebody pull out in front of me, I'll slow down, let them in. I've done that. You know, knowingly or unknowingly, okay, I've done that. Pretty much anything anybody's ever going to do to us, if we can just say, yep, I understand I've done that. I've been there. I hope somebody forgave me, and I'm certainly going to forgive them. Yes, I find that that immediately disperses. I've done that. I've done that. Okay, let's talk about the four types of anger that the Bible talks about. One is sudden anger, which is to be controlled. We already knew that because we've experienced that in our own lives, kind of what I was saying. We may blame our quick temper on our red hair or on our heritage. Well, he's got German blood or Irish blood or something like that. Okay, well... I'm angry because my dad, oh, I remember. I remember one time we went to a parts house. I went with my dad, one of the first times I went with my dad. And the guy did something to anger my dad. And my dad threatened to whip him right then and there. And, of course, the guy then cooperated and did what. But, you know, I learned right then that sometimes being angry can get my way. Anybody else ever done that? Oh, come on. Yeah. And so guess what? Somebody didn't do what I wanted. And this was probably as a teenager. And I got angry and it worked. We learn angry. Guess what? We can also learn control. I said we learn anger. We can learn to control it too. Sure. 
we learn anger. You're not hearing me this morning. This is Good. flying over your head. If we can learn anger, guess what? We can learn to control it. Right? Sometimes people are proud of it. Maybe we've been proud of it. I can remember the time thinking, well, I'm going to walk in there. And if I have to, I'll just get angry. Is that the right attitude? But we do it. Okay? Sudden anger to be controlled. If we have a short fuse, we're going to, now you can imagine there's a long list. I'm not going to cover all of them. Probably we're going to do a lot of foolish things. Probably we're going to hurt others because, as I said, hurt people hurt people. We'll say things that we know we shouldn't have. We'll do things that we, uh, we're going to be sorry for later on. Does anger or blowing off steam, giving them a think or two, or showing them who is boss, or attempts to get even, do they really, really work? Do they really fix the problem? In the case where my dad got angry at a guy and he got the part or whatever it was, I don't remember what it was. Did it really work? He got the, what he wanted, he got his way, but at what cost? Was it really worth it? I'm going to say, probably not. The older I get, now I'm about 60, the older I get, the longer I live, the more I find out that anger only gets us misery. I try just, I just really... I just made a commitment one day to the Lord. I said, I'm just not going to get angry anymore. I need you to help me with my anger. That's the real key. Sudden anger is to be controlled. What about always looking for bad in others? Well, if we look for it, guess what we're going to find? If we look for good, guess what we're going to find? I remember a story where there was an old man at the gate, and these uh, two young men came up, and he said, uh, Tell us about the people in the city here. We're, we're looking for a city that we just might move to. Old man, can you tell us what kind of people live in the city? And the old man says, uh, the city you're from, what kind of people live in that city? He said, oh, they're just mean, hateful people. He said, that's why we're thinking about moving. He said, they just talk about you, talk behind your back. And he said, they're just mean and hateful. And he said, well... That's sort of the way it is here, too. Oh, thank you. I'll move on. Next day, a couple other guys came up. Said, oh, man, what kind of people live in this city? We're thinking about finding a new city, a new place to live. And he said, well, the city you're from, what kind of people are there? He said, oh, they're the kindest people. They're loving. They'll give you the shirt off your back. He said, we don't even lock our doors. He said, the wonderful, I hate to have to move. He said, but I... Circumstances are I have, have to find a new place. He said, you know, that's the way it is right here. Abraham Lincoln said, most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. I'm going to say, most people get angry about as often as they want to. Now look, I'm not sitting up here saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I've conquered anger. Everybody, everybody it's a disease we all have. Okay? As a matter of fact, if you, if you don't think you have the disease, then that's just like an alcoholic. The first step to getting out of alcoholism and realize you're an alcoholic. Okay? First the step to control our anger is we have to realize we all have one. Anger is like noses. We all have one. But we can't control it. Abraham Lincoln also said, any fool can criticize, condemn, or complain, and most fools do. What about walking around with a chip on our shoulder? Just daring for people to offend us, do something wrong to us. Well, you know, if you look for trouble, that's what you find. Are we waiting for someone to do something wrong or something against us? Proverbs says, a wrathful or an angry man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Back when I was in the world of uh, training, business training, and public speaking training, and sales and management training, the fellow that I reported to was, I, I never saw him ever get mad. I do remember one time I saw his face get red, because it was bubbling up. I never saw him get mad. Never saw him lose his temper. Never saw him say an angry word to anybody. 
you know, one day we were talking, mm -hmm. and he said, well, Stan, in a very patient way, he said, well, Stan, he said, I wasn't always this way. I would catch the bus back home. Really? He said, oh, yes. He said, I actually used to be a person, and he talked real slow like that, a person that got very angry, very quick. And then when I got That's angry, I pulled out the machine gun, and I became a machine gun mount. And he said, and then I shot off my mount. And he said, and one day, Lee Strong, his older brother, which was in the business, very respected in the business, sat down and said, I don't think, uh, that's the last time, right? That's the last time today? Okay. Probably out of parking. <clears throat> he said, uh, I do not think that you're going to progress in this business until you can control your anger, until you can control your mouth. And he said, from that day on, I purposed to never get angry again. Hey, that's a pretty good witness. That's a pretty good testimony right there. Because I never saw him angry. Never. Now, I will say I was at a party and um, with these other trainers and things sitting around. And someone made a comment and complimented him to his wife. And says, you know, Paul is such a wonderful, nice guy. So kind. So understanding, and, and, and his wife responded back and says, well, you know, Paul doesn't take his work home with him. Which told me that probably at home he still gets angry. But at least in business-wise, I never saw it. Well, here's what we want to do. We want to get to where, whether it's home, whether it's business, whether we think someone's watching, whether it affects our income or a promotion, we know that God's watching and He's the one we're trying to please. That was a good place for an amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah, that, that, that was... I know, this is kind of a hard, hard message this morning. But you know, as a Christian, it's what we have to look at. We have to look at our heart and say, is there something we need to work on? He that answereth a matter, before he heareth it, it is folly and a shame to him. In other words, sometimes we think, oh yeah, I got it, I got it, and then we spout off. No, that's not what I was going to say. No, that's not what I was going to say. No, we weren't even going there. And then, all right, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. We, do, we have to watch that. But this is saying, sometimes we assume and get ourselves in trouble. You've heard about assume, right? So, we won't go there, but... <clears throat> a man of great wrath, or anger, shall suffer punishment. A man of great wrath, or anger, shall suffer punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. So, we've got to just watch our anger, control our anger. So, what are the penalties of losing our anger? Solutions. Dale Carnegie said, when you're wrong, admit it quickly and emphatically. You know, some people absolutely, positively can never admit that they're wrong. They can never admit that they're wrong. Have you ever met somebody like that? <clears throat> I remember when I was very young, my friend down the street, I don't remember what the situation is, but I'll never forget what he said. He said, it takes a bigger man to admit when he's wrong and apologize. And I've always held that. So... Since I make a lot of mistakes, I have to apologize often. Well, as I'm getting older, I can now claim that I'm having to apologize less. But it's saying that if we make a mistake, admit it quickly and emphatically because there's something absolutely powerful when we can admit our mistake. If we've offended someone, if we... All right, well, here, I'll give you an example. A lady called me yesterday, and she said, I'm calling to apologize. I never hear this. Now, I'm always having to do it myself, but I never hear this, at least, at least with Leslie. You know. She says, I sent you an email, and I said some things I didn't mean, and 
I looked back at the email and I realized that what I had said was really out of line. I'm good friends with such and such, which is a very close friend of Leslie and I's. And she says, I just, I'm calling to apologize. I really stepped out of line. And please, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Put me back on the email update list. And I said, You know what? Probably I'd say today we're closer because of that than we were before. I'll give you another example. <clears throat>